Hi and welcome back to your channel. In today's video, we will look at the Leapulse lithium iron phosphate battery. 12 volt, 100 amp hours, small form factor, not a mini and not a group 31. This one is also a group 24, I believe. And this battery is smaller than the ones we've seen on the market so far. This is a brand new battery, by the way, and of course, a brand new brand. So in this video, we will do the typical talk about this battery. We'll do as well a capacity test and then want to do a teardown as well. So let's get started with this battery. New brand battery. It's a similar housing as we know already, but it does have those handles, which not all batteries have so far. Well, different handle. And it also does have those rubber caps as well. And they provide for those terminals, M8 bolts, washer and split washer, two pairs, which is great. Other than that, the orange and black housing, nice to see. So since I was carrying it on or holding it on my, on my shoulder, it weighs about 22 to 23 pounds. And in terms of size, we're dealing with 10.25 white and 6.5, 6.6 in depth and 8.2, 8.3 in height. That's what I measured. This is what they have on the description or in, in the description on Amazon. And additionally, what they provide online on Amazon in the description, it's not a lot. It's nice to see. I see on the pictures, it should have some prismatic cells. It says it has overcharge protection, short circuit protection, over current protection, over discharge protection, and high temp cutoff protection. It doesn't talk about cold cutoff protection, but sometimes um, they just build it in because it maybe the, G, uh, maybe the BMS does have it or not, or they just connect a little temperature probe. So we'll look at that later in the teardown to understand if it has more than they claim or not. And also the cells to see are they actually prismatic. Also, they say it should be create a cell. So we'll see if that's true. We'll try, we'll try to take it apart and see and confirm hopefully everything we see and also see how the build quality is because that's uh, crucial for some of you bias and should be. So other than that, they claim they have five year warranty, which is great to read, right? Uh, we provide customers with a five year warranty. I hope you will never need that, but no one knows. Also, they claim that you can put this battery up to, here it comes, 16 batteries, four in parallel, four in series. So that is pretty impressive. I think it's up to a 48 volt pack with 400 amp hours, which is pretty impressive. Um, at that point, you might think, oh, do I really need to go with a 12 volt battery? It's really maybe something up to you. And at the moment, as of recording this video in November, $219, sorry, $220 plus shipping and tax, obviously. This is a really good price, I feel like. I like that the price is dropping and I do like that they come out with those size batteries in the meantime, not only the minis. Minis are even a little more compact, but they do have pouch cells and pouch cells might have a little more disadvantages as you don't like. Um, so the discharge shouldn't be as high as uh, continuously and stuff like that. So it really depends um, at the end on the cells and the BMS and what you wanna do. So you, your use case. For me, use cases, this type of battery, car camping, overlanding, that's perfect. I can power everything in 12 volt system or 24 volt system, so that's perfect. Um, I do have the inverter I wanna use it with. Maybe I wanna run a heater off them because it's you know getting a little colder and chillier out there slowly. But this is my use case I'm using it. Of course, you can also have in an RV build or something like that where you have a 12 volt system or you have maybe, a, or you plan to have a 48 volt system in the future, but you wanna start off with 12, then you wanna upgrade to 24, etc. And the small form factor of those batteries I like. So yeah, next steps will be capacity test. Then we'll do the teardown. And since this is a fairly new battery, I'm really excited about the build quality of this one. So we'll really take a look at that. And as always, if you have any questions, um, please write them in the comment section below. So I know what to look out for in the next video if you wanna see something specific. This battery is also in the description below linked. So in case you wanna pick one up for that price tag, Let's do the capacity test first, second the teardown, and then I'll give you my thoughts about this battery. All right, look at that. I did restart everything. Here we're at. I tried to 
press the record button, but it looks like I didn't. So I just started a, a few seconds ago with the capacity test. You can see we are one minute in, so it's one minute ago. So that's good to see. It started, it's ramping up. It's at uh, 0.2C, around that 0.2C it will run. Here the amperage you see, which is drawing from the battery. And uh, to prove it real quick, here is the battery, the lead pulse, and right next to it, as always, my setup, which is, whoop, going back, which is inverted on here. We do have my smart chant here, everything connected, and through the inverter, I'm charging from the Lee Pulse, another battery with a 20 amp lithium ion phosphate charger. So let's continue this one and see how much we can draw out of this battery. Oh, nice, there we are. We just hit the 100 amp hours, which makes us with the Lee Pulse battery past the capacity test already. And there's a little bit more to go, so we'll see what the end result will be. All right, I think that's enough below 10 volts so it's as i mentioned already passed with 102.53 amp hours in total capacity is passed now it's time to take this thing apart since this is a group 24 form factor i'm really curious how it looks inside so the next step will be opening this one up and to make it short and quick for you we'll just look at that we can open it nice and as always, it has a strong smell, but all right, let's see. I did cut in here a little bit, but we do have, what do we have? We have 412 gauge wires here on the negative side. Same applies back here. Four, go, four 12 gauge wires on the positive side. And to give you also a better view up here, here you can see the terminal. They're both in a specific direction. They look like hydroelectric crimped. That's good to see. They feel very tight, not moving around. And let me, the positive, the main positive is back here. No. And the main negative to the BMS is on this side. Let me see if I can get it out. Here you can see the entire unit. A lot of glue holding it in. Nothing at the bottom. That's good for me to disassemble and there was nothing moving around anyways. All right, so main or the terminal positive negative up here with those four 12 gauge wires then we have high density foam on all sides that's nice we have on this side it does look yeah so oh that's interesting that huh? yeah good so it does look like here on this bms we do have here's the main negative side which goes to the terminal they look just screwed there's no clue nothing on it to insulate or whatever uh, with hex bolts they have a washer and a split washer that's good to see on the other side the same a little more dense there are four and four negative here from this side to the bms and then going out also four wires that's good to see uh question if i can peel this off and see what it is underneath mm. We'll check that out in a second. We do have a temperature or something here, because I saw it already. It's down here, looks like. Let's see what it is. It did claim it has high temp cutoff, so. All right, it does look like a temperature switch, which has 65 on top. So this is a temperature, high temp cutoff switch. And what's nice about it, and I think I have to, yeah, turn on this side. What's nice about this, we have the confirmation basically, those are prismatic cells. 
Nice to scrap. It's nice to see. We can nice take this off. Okay. Let me scan the code for you really quick. All right, what do you see here? We do have laser welded terminals. All those balance leads, wires, they are just routed here and then underneath glued under the high density foam. That's all. So we can see, let's, we can see here we have the balance leads soldered on. The soldering is, it's okay. It's a blob, a blob of solder mass basically. Um, when it gets too hot, there is the chance, and that's something which is not good in general. Um, when it gets too hot at one point, it you know it needs to be a lot of heat, but um, they can just get loose, and then that's it with the battery. So I like those laser welded uh, terminals here. I don't like the bus bars because they still don't give any room for expansion contraction at all. It's nice to see that also in between there is epoxy. It's here on this side and on the other side back there as well. So you see it. I don't know if you can see it here in between. So there's a little, it creates a gap basically. Um, but also there's more stress on those terminals when they expand and contract. So keep that in mind. And the uh, epoxy board is usually nothing which gives at all. A little, a very thin layer of rubber or something which gives a little foam, very thin foam in between would be better to um, give the chance to contract and expand, but yeah, it's better than nothing. Here we have the main positive, as I said, the main negative on this side from the batteries. The balance leads the rod through here in the middle to the BMS on this side. So that's the BMS again, right? So here we have it, and, and there's a little label underneath, but I'm worried when I peel this off, this will just peel the label off with it. We cannot read it, yeah. So, no chance to read it. I have no idea what's written on it. So. No, it doesn't work, so I don't know what kind of beam as it is. Here we have this high density foam underneath, which is nice to have. And it looks like there is a bolt, then there is a little washer in between, a plastic washer and spacer. And then on the other side, in this foam board underneath here, that's where the nut is and that's where they were screwed in so you can take this off actually. What else can we see is here. Here's the balance leads with a blob of glue. Then we have the switch, the high temperature switch. That's all we have and that's all. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's uh, nice to see the prismatic cells. It's nice to see everything squeezed in. It's the only concern I would have um, is actually those Balance lead solder joints here. And the bus bars, those two I would like to see improved on this. Um, and then, of course, in the middle a little bit more uh, of this foam, which they have here, or actually on this side. Uh, yeah. And then a little, maybe a rubber foam or something in between, or rubber um, plate in between would be more helpful. But um, you have access to all the vents here, that's good to see. And as long as it's not in crazy heat, those solder joints should hold, even though they're you know, not best craftsmanship, but, and you see sometimes also back here, for example, you can see that it has already color changed on this balance lead. So the solder probably also got on this cable basically. So yeah, let's see real quick if the high temp cutoff works. I have the bench bars away connected to terminal and the probe is down here. Oh, you cannot see that down there here in my fingers. I'll use the heat gun and see. Here's the display, so you see it's charging. Let me turn on the heat gun and see how quickly it stops. And there we have it, it did stop. And there it is, bang up, nice. So the high temp cutoff works. There's no cold cutoff, would be great to see, but it is what it is, so that's all about this battery. Nice. So we're at the end of the video. I want to highlight again, this is a Group 24 battery casing. So that means that the size is different and smaller, which is really nice to see. So you can definitely use it for different outdoor scenarios and camping scenarios way better. 
and they claim, and I haven't tested this yet, but I would like to test it up to 4P or 4S. So in total, maximum 16 batteries you can put in parallel and series together, which would be impressive and great to see. But so far, this battery did pass the capacity test. That's nice. The build quality is decent. Um, one thing I would like to see, as I mentioned already, is uh, the solder joints or the soldering on the balance leads would be great to be better and improved. And the bus bars should have a hump or something in it, so there is a little more contraction and uh, expansion possible in terms of um, taking stress off the terminals and avoiding any, any damaging on the cells. So those are my two concerns. So I would like to see that uh, improved in that, but it is already a nice, awesome, smaller form factor, which I love to see. And can you imagine having this battery in 200 amp hours? That would be amazing. I hope you liked the video about this battery. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff like that. Thanks for watching. Cheers!